Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is our uh, second video on the Aeon Labs multi-sensor. Um, and uh, we're going to take a look today at how to pair this Z-Wave multi-sensor with a controller device. The controller device that we're using is uh, this Z-Stick from, again, from Aeon Labs. Um, this plugs into your computer. Um, we've got it plugged into an Apple Mac. Um, and uh, this controls uh, signals to and from uh, the Z-Wave devices. So we're going to look at how to pair that together and get it included into the uh, into the Z-Wave network. So first of all, we need to start by opening up the uh, the sensor. So let's uh, let's get this open. As you can see from these uh, these little icons here, it's a twist action to open it up. So just twist it to uh, the side and uh, and it opens up there. Um, I've already installed the batteries, um, but it takes six of these little uh, AAA batteries. Uh, these come with the uh, with the Aetec, and you can see there there's a sensitivity switch, um, which we've got it set up to uh, maximum sensitivity uh, at the moment. To the side of that is uh, is a little black switch, uh, and that's the inclusion switch. So what we're going to need to do is enable our controller for inclusion. Now some uh, some controllers will uh, will be enabled in different ways, but for the Z stick it's pretty simple. All you do is unplug it from your USB port on the computer, and it's battery powered, so you just press and it starts flashing, ready for inclusion. So whatever we've got now, within about a foot distance of it, will be included. Um, if I single click the switch here, you can see that I get a, a long light on the um, Z wave stick, and then it starts flashing again. It's now ready to include uh, another device. I could walk around the house and include various devices. Um, so this device is now included in this Z-Wave network and they're paired. So uh, we can take that over to the computer, have a look and see what, uh, see what we get. Okay, so um, we're back at my uh, Mac now. Uh, I've actually already got this motion center set up, but uh, basically what I did was I connected the um, USB stick, the Z-Wave stick, back into my uh, Mac uh, and then loaded my Indigo software. Now this software I've got on demo and uh, it's from Perceptive Automation. Um, seems pretty decent so far. As you can see from the screen, I've got quite a few devices um, loaded up, which I'll show those in future videos. But the one that we've just added is this um, motion sensor. So what I did was uh, plug my Z-Wave device back in and um, that's already enabled there, which I showed on a previous video. If you've not seen that, go and take a look. Um, once that's enabled, the Z-Stick, then you can add a new device. You select the device type from this drop-down, which would be a Z-Wave. It then brings up this uh, synchronization. Now, I've already done this, so you can't really see it, but when there are new devices to, uh, to sync, uh, you refresh the list on there, um, pick the device from the drop-down, which will say something like uh, multi-sensor, um, and then you, uh, you click sync. Uh, if you wait a few seconds after syncing, the device syncs and it will pull up the, um, the config window, which if I just load mine now, it's something like that. Uh, a multi-sensor DSP05 it comes up as, um, and then you get to configure the four different, um, four different uh, options there. Um, so it's a motion sensor, as I said before, you can give that a name and some descriptions. Mine's going to be my living room. Um, it will then be a, a temperature sensor, so I've called mine the living room temperature sensor. Uh, it's a humidity sensor, you give that a name, and a luminance sensor as well. So you can control things depending on whether it's light and dark. For example, if I walk into the room, the motion sensor detects it. If the luminance is below so many uh, looks, then it will put the light on for me if I've got a light connected to it. Um, so there's some device settings uh, within each of these uh, tabs and if you edit those you can start to uh, get into the nitty gritty of the, uh, of the device. So um, here I can say that it wakes every 30 minutes to report battery levels and, uh, and so on to back to my controller. Um, it can wake 10 minutes before a battery change. Um, this here is the uh, motion sensor enable disable button for example. Um, here in seconds, how long to wait in seconds um, before it says that there's no motion after it detects no motion. Um, this is the reporting interval and a factory reset uh, on there as well. So uh, various bits and bobs you can configure 
Um, again, in the temperature sensor, let's see if there's anything different there. Yeah, there's no configuration for temperature there. That's just going to sit and record it. Um, so once that's set up, um, I've got um, the motion sensor there and the temperature sensor there, light sensor there and living room sensor there. It's actually reported them as four different devices um, in my Indigo software. But you can see it's picking up already. It's picked up that it's 62% uh, humid. Uh, in the room I'm in. It's 24.4 degrees, so it's a fairly warm day today. And it's 463 lux. Um, and they update in, according to the uh, schedules that, uh, that were set in that motion, motion center. Um, I can also see um, there the battery level. Um, I've been running this for um, quite some time now and I've still got 89% battery life left. Uh, you can save battery life by editing these settings here. Um, so obviously um, the more frequent you get it to wake up, the more um, battery you're going to use. Uh, the, the, the more frequent the reporting interval for the sensors, you know, how often are you going to keep telling it to tell uh, the controller how warm it is and how light it is and the humidity, uh, then you're going to use your battery up more. So I've got mine set at uh, default for reporting but uh, and default for the wake interval. Uh, I've not got default for the delay off uh, for the moment, just while I'm trying things out, I've got that to 30 seconds. So what I'll do now is I'll show you um, a cutback so that you can see as there's motion, what happens on screen and how quickly it detects that motion uh, in the software. Okay, so um, I've tried to uh, put the motion sensor now on my Mac, really close up uh, to the actual if I can zoom in there, that's it. I don't know if you can see at the top of the screen that uh, just below the battery level indicator, uh, I've got the Indigo software running and I've got uh, the uh, Z-Wave device now paired up. So um, it says under there status off. Um, so what I'm going to do for you is I'm just going to move slightly um, and see if you can see how quickly it takes um, for the status device to uh, status of the device to turn on. So um, I'm keeping really still for the moment. So here we go, I'm going to move now. So did you see that? The LED on the device there um, uh, activated, so you could, you could see it had detected motion. And literally within about a second, the, uh, the status uh, on screen there went uh, right at the top of the screen, went from off to on. So um, I'm going to try and keep really still now. So um, you'll see within about 30 seconds, uh, if you can still see that status is on, that will go to off and uh, Indigo will then know, there we go, the device is now off. So um, hopefully uh, that was fairly clear. I'll just do that one more time, I'm just going to move now and then you'll be able to see on less than a second uh, as soon as it detects my movement, uh, Indigo um, sees that device has been on. So what you can do from that really is um, start to trigger um, various events. So if this was acting as a security uh, sensor that might trigger an email to my mobile device when the alarm is on to say there's been some movement in the house uh, and, and email me straight there. You can do that from the Indigo software. Perhaps you can get it to text me or get it to um, sound an alarm um, or you get it to trigger some other devices. So even if it's not alarm, if it's just make the lights come on when somebody's in the house and it's dark so um, that could start to trigger other devices and I'll show you how to do that in up and coming videos. Okay so that's it really, that's the um, AirTech or Aeon Labs multi-sensor, 4-in-1 sensor um, using Z-Wave technology. I've showed you how to pair it and um, how it reacts with the controller software which I'm using which is uh, Perceptive Automation's Indigo. Um, in future we'll, uh, we'll have that um, tied up so that it starts to do other events based upon movement but uh, hopefully that's given you a good idea of how it works. Um, I've been running it for a few weeks and I'm really pleased with it so um, I shall keep that part of the, uh, the network here and part of the testing. Uh, if you want to follow our, the rest of our series then uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be putting lots more videos on home automation in future and um, don't forget to follow us at Today's Top Tech on Twitter and go to our website todaystoptech.com. Thanks a lot.